Welcome in the latest episode of the Five on the Floor podcast on the Five Reasons Sports Network. This is Ethan Skolnick. Thank you for all your interest. You are allowing us to expand to five days a week once the NBA season resumes. Also, check out fivereasonsports.com where you can find not only this podcast and the other podcasts in our network like Three Yards Per Carry and Five Rings Canes, but all of our merchandise which we've got just about everything in South Florida sports. Our YouTube channel just went over 3,000 subscribers. You can get that on our website. And also all our stories and our columns from our more than 50 contributors. It's all free, no paywall. Also want to tell you, before we get to our special episode with Miami Heat rookie Casey Akpala, about a couple of the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. All of our sponsors are local, including our guy Mark over in North Miami. is on 146th Street. Would you break it Wheel Fix. That's you break it. Wheelfix.com. They're a wheel repair and remanufacturing company. They do powder coating for custom color changes on wheels. If you're tired of your wheels, give your car a new and refreshed look by powder coating them a new color like Miami Heat Vice. They've got those there. They're also wheeling out a new Dolphins concept. If your wheels are faded and scratched, renew them with their in-house wheel refinishing. You can repair damaged wheels that are curbed, bent, or cracked as well. They've got 15 years of experience. Again, they're right there in North Miami at 1861 Northeast 146th Street. That's 1861 Northeast 146th Street, North Miami. And the phone number is 305 Seven four eight zero one one two. Again, that's three zero five seven four eight zero one one two. Five reasons wheels. Use that code when you go to youbreakitwheelfix.com, and you'll get ten percent off four wheels repair or refurbishing. Also, I want to tell you about another of the great sponsors, the Five Reasons Sports Network, and that's Mister M Sandwich Shop. They got these on both. Hollywood and in Davie. The one in Davie, of course, is across from the Dolphins facility, Nova Southeastern University. You can online order at MrMsubs.com. That's MrMsubs.com. Use the code 5R and you'll get 10% off your order. They've been serving South Florida since 1979. Philly cheesesteaks, subs, wraps, and salads, and everything there is made fresh to order. When you go to the Davy shop, go in and say hello to Paul and Jody. Tell them you heard about the ad on the podcast. Again, it's MrMsubs.com. And now, today's special episode with KZ Akpala. Welcome to Five on the Floor. A Miami Heat and NBA podcast from Ethan Skolnick with Alvon Sydney, a.k.a. Alf954. Brought to you by the Five Reasons Sports Network. Welcome back to the Five on the Floor podcast on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks again for joining us today. We've got a special guest on the Miami Heat. We've also got two of my regular co-hosts here with me, Alex Toledo and Greg Sylvander. Again, check out fivereasonsports.com for all of your South Florida sports content. But this guy has been one of the most requested players for our podcast because everybody wants to know what he's up to and they've been following him on social media. He was a second round pick of the Miami Heat in the most recent draft, which I guess is just about a year and a week ago as we talk today. And he's KZ Akpala out of Stanford. KZ, thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. So are you aware, we'll start here, are you aware of the social media sensation that you've become with Heat fans? Because it seems like on what we call hashtag Heat Twitter, everybody wants to know what KZ's up to. Everybody was following you in the G League when you're in Sioux Falls. Do you pay much attention to that? Have you gotten a sense of how excited fans are to see more of you? Uh, I mean, I know uh, the fans show uh, mad love. Uh, which is great, but uh, in regards to social media, I'm kind of, I, I, I feel like I'm a little different than most people in the sense that, like, uh, I think I just, I, a lot of people don't come from where I come from, I think, so I think that makes, that makes me a little different, so I don't, I'm not, I don't really keep too much tabs on social media, and, like, I'm not really too, too uh, hands-on with, with social media. I just, post every once in a while so yeah it's kind of new to me a little bit well one of the things that got some attention and i want to ask you about this is how different your body looks since you went down to to sioux falls and and there were some videos and things can you talk a little bit about the shape that you've gotten yourself into and, and how different that is maybe from one year ago today um i would say yeah just um diet um 
in obviously in Miami, body fat's big, so it's not necessarily bulking up and trying to be way the most. It's really just trying to be the best version of yourself and give yourself the best ability to play at, at, the, at your highest level. So I think that's the biggest thing for me. Was I'm obviously trying to gain muscle, but at the same time, uh, be as lean as possible and. I think that's the best bet for me to stay healthy. Hey, KZ, Greg Solander here. Um, Welcome. So kind of piggybacking off that point related to, um, you know, improving physically, I wonder um, what specific skills have developed for you between the time you left Stanford to your time in the G League to today? What what would you say are the skills that are um, that have accelerated the most since you've uh, arrived? Uh, I think the skills would be mainly reading the game, but just my finish is just uh, like same leg, same hand finishes. I think that's the biggest thing that, and the extra dribble, I think that's the biggest thing that I really, to be honest, wasn't even aware of. Like, obviously, I would see it and be like, oh, it's a nice move. But I never thought, oh, I, I should put that in my game. So that's the biggest thing, driving, uh, making a move, driving in there. And utilize, utilizing the extra dribble, um, knowing that the pace of when you drive and uh, and off balance, like your angles and all that stuff, because I, uh, I think in college I was used to just driving and what they say here, going off the launching pad, which um, doesn't always work uh, against bigger, uh, more athletic um talent so I think that's the biggest thing skill wise and just and, and just reading the game that's the biggest thing for me just because Pac-12 and um, the NBA is two different ball games so yeah Hey uh, KZ Alex here I wanted to ask now that you talk over here about how much you've improved on since you joined and I wanted to know I mean people you're known as a kind of an all around guy you got the size to play multiple positions, guard multiple positions. So I want to know, coming from you, if you had to rank your best skills one through five, how would you, off the top of your head? My best skills? Yeah. Uh, I think I don't. I could. I don't think I could rank them right now, but I would say, um, just uh versatility and what, what I mean by that is uh, if a five, four or five is guarding me, I'm quick enough, I'm skilled enough, uh, my handle is good enough to go by them. And then defensively, I can guard smaller, uh, give smaller guards trouble because I'm long, but I can still slide with them. So it's all that type of stuff, playmaking, just once again, the mismatch, if I have a four or five on me, um, I I can be able to get into the middle and play make from there. I think I can pass extremely well, um, and then being able to run the floor, fast breaks. I think I can bring the ball up when I get the ball off the rebound. I can really push it up and really start the break by myself. And um, guards ones and twos aren't always getting the rebounds. For me, I can find the ball easy and push it up, uh, start the fast break just off a regular miss. So I think putting my team in advantages like that, I think those are my strengths. Casey, you were kind of in a strange situation last year because you were traded on draft night. And so you couldn't start with the team right away. And I remember being out in Vegas. Alex was as well. And we were kind of waiting for you to get your opportunity. And then it was supposed to happen, I guess, after July 6th. And then it got delayed a little bit. How much – well, I guess first thing, how difficult was that for you and as you watched guys like Tyler and Duncan and Kendrick Nunn kind of tear apart the summer league last year, which is not surprising when you look at the success they had during the regular season, um, how badly did you want to get out there? And, and do you think it held you back in any way from where you wanted to get to in your first season? Um, I mean, I, I never think like that. Um, uh, whatever happens, happens for a reason. And you just got to um, – um, worry about the things that that you can control, control the things you can control. So for me, I was just um, learning, um, doing everything I could, being that I can't play. So whether that be asking guys, oh, 
how how to do that, how to use the um, learning without playing was what, what I was doing. I think it helped just me even being there, being able to cheer on those guys, being around that talent, being right there, being able to watch um, those players. Like you said, Duncan, Tyler, Kena, being able to watch. So I don't really look at like, oh, it set me back. Uh, I don't have time to worry like that. I just simply don't have the time. Uh, there's so much things that I need to accomplish, so many things I can't be working on. So I don't have time to be like, to dwell on things that I can't control. So, yeah. That mentality sounds really familiar with Heat culture. Um, if you had to identify a couple of teammates that you think have been most instrumental um, and influential in your growth since you arrived in Miami, um, who, who would those guys be? Um, I would say Duncan. Duncan is really someone I can call whenever and just um, who's older, but at the same time, go, but at the same time, going kind of uh, uh, had a different route and my route um, for sure is different. So he's someone I could relate to a little bit. Um, but um, every single person I could go to and ask questions, and they will give me their honest opinion. And that's um, that's the only thing you can ask for. So um, being able to be comfortable enough that I can go to any of my teammates and they'll give me their honest opinion. So I think that's the type of culture that Miami has. And I'm, I'm um, comfortable enough to go to all of them because um, they make it that way. They make it comfortable. They, they welcome me with open arms. So I think uh, each one of them um, uh, I've learned something from, um, whether it be on the court, off the court. Was it encouraging in any way, kind of the, the six, I mean, you talk about getting stuff from them and learning from them, but the, the fact that the Heat, an organization that typically, you know, has made younger guys wait for a little while, played a lot of veteran players, this year had Kendrick as a starter from the very beginning. I know he's a little older than the average rookie, but still didn't have NBA experience. And then had Tyler playing such a big role and playing crunch time minutes. Do you see yourself with those guys, with Bam, with DJJ, maybe as, as sort of a young core that can all grow together and all kind of experience this stuff at the same time? Um, for me, uh, all those guys who play, they've earned it. Um, Tyler, Kenan, and Duncan, uh, each one of them. So for me, it's just uh, making sure every time I'm in practice, um, um, on and off the court, I'm doing the best to earn um, the respect of my peers and my coaches. So I think that's the biggest thing. And I know I can add a lot to this um, organization. I know I can from the bottom of my heart. I believe so. So for me, it's just being able to show that. And and I'm not worried about – I know um, – I'm not worried about um, whether um, they're going to – I know if I earn it, um, I know I just have to show it. And, and then the rest uh, will – will go in line. So that's that's the biggest thing for me. KZ, uh, I think something that Heat fans would be interested to know is, did you growing up, did you have any favorite Heat players or guys that you think of when it comes to the Miami Heat? I mean, uh, there was a time where I followed LeBron wherever he went. So definitely when LeBron went to Miami. Was, <laughs> oh, that you're was, one of those, KZ? Definitely. You're one of those guys, man. For sure, for sure, for sure. I'm not going to lie. I, I ain't going to lie, yeah. I followed LeBron wherever he went. So... So, yeah, that was when I was really obsessed with my, Miami. Miami was all – when I had the iPod, iPods and all that, they were the, my screensaver, right winning. Because I think that, that's when the iPod – that's when I got the iPod. I don't know when it came out, but I know I had the big three as my screensaver. I could probably show you the exact same, the exact one. So, so yeah, that's when I was really um, – because I just didn't understand why everybody was hating on him. So, I think that's why I really was obsessed with it. Miami and I was obsessed with LeBron so yeah well let's talk about that path a little bit because you mentioned you didn't have the most uh customary path and and then obviously uh, what 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 kind of just your backstory a little bit um you know how did you grow up loving the game and how did you end up at Stanford and in the role that you ended up there uh I grew up um uh finding the love for basketball at the park um uh, in Southern California, I think pickup basketball is big just because the weather's always nice out. So going to the parks, playing with other guys, um, there was nothing really else to do. All my friends, that's what we all did, like, is what we love to do. And I think it's similar to a lot of kids. Like, a lot of kids um, growing up, 
um, in their backyards, 24-7, just playing basketball. And I, that's how I grew up, just um, playing pickup, not wanting to get off the court, making sure that you got to win, and even fighting with your friends if they're not doing the right thing, having arguments after, all that, all that stuff was just uh, – uh, every day that that's what everybody wanted to do. We'll text each other. All right, are we going to Desmond Park at, at 7 p.m. with you? Um, so yeah, and then I knew basketball is what I wanted to do. Um, probably around sixth grade, and growing up, my parents' um, education was really important. You, you couldn't go home with bad grades, so so. I was thinking I better have good grades. I want to be able to go to the park at seven. You feel me? So that's how that, that that's how that happened. And then I was like, let me keep my parents happy by going to Stanford. Uh, at the same time, I get to play in the Pac-12, get to stay in the West Coast. Um, it's the best of both worlds. And then when I got to Stanford, I was like, um, I understood that what I wanted, what I always wanted my entire life was playing the NBA. So. Uh, I was trying to get there. I was trying to, as soon as I had an opportunity, I took it, and here I am right now, just um, knowing the hard work is going to get me wherever I need to go in this life. So yeah. Before we get to some rapid fire with you, you got to ask this one question: What is the toughest course that you took at Stanford? Uh-huh, the toughest course. Um, uh, I, um, I took this anthropology class that was. That was tough, just because I took the class not even necessarily knowing what anthropology is. Uh, I took a lot of I, I, took, I, took, <laughs> I took a lot I took a lot of tough courses at Stanford. Uh, there was a writing class that all freshmen have to take, and it's just with Stanford is very different. It's even different from Ivy Leagues where um, the learning is really hands on, um, and they really want to push your uh, creative um, um, like space. They want they want to make each individual at that school different. They want to see how you're different and they like the challenge. And the teachers want to want to um, test for why you're at the school. So I think that's what makes the um, institution different and ch- challenging at the same time. So, yeah. KZ, if there was one player um, in the league today or in the past that you had to say, most closely resembled your game if, if it was your choice to call out a guy that you think um, you have either tried to emulate or you just see your game kind of morphing in that direction what player would that be coming from you I mean I don't think there's one but there's a lot of guys that, that I see like we move similar and in some ways I think me and B.I. Brandon Ingram um, some of our hesitations are similar the, the way we attack because he kind of, he's kind of upright and and, and and his shifts are really uh, real quick, quick. And I think I got that. I got a little of that. And then me growing up, I really love I love the Reasons game. Uh, when he was on the Lakers, I, I was obsessed with Reasons. So, and I think with a similar size, um, defensively, he plays the pass lanes well. Um, he likes to get out and run. I think I see myself doing similar things with him. So I think those two, there's a lot of guys. A lot of guys, we do similar stuff, but... On top of my head right now, I think those, those are two I, I can could, I could see myself and I, and I really respect their game. And both. All right, let's do this rapid fire thing now. I um, want to start off with this. You mentioned guys that you want to emulate your game after, but I got to ask you this one. Ha- have you seen the, the, the baby Giannis stuff out there for you? On the I mentioned the social media. This oh, one's man. caught fire. <laughs> uh, have I seen that? Yeah, I've, I've seen that. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I've seen that. <laughs> Thoughts? <laughs> you said my thoughts, my thoughts. I mean, Giannis is a, um, a beast. You know what I mean? Uh, so, so I think I definitely see uh, a lot of similarities. Um, the way he, he he snatches that off the boards and pushes it up, and and uses his body uh, to bum guys around. I think I do that uh, in a very similar way. So, so he's a hell of a player, and and to be c- compared to him is just. There's a blessing, so yeah. Okay, so it was preseason. I think I saw you in Charlotte on the road, and I asked you if you were stranded on an island and you had to listen to um, Finally Rich by Chief Keef. And, and that was 
um, really widely regarded as uh, everyone loved it on social media. So now I come back to you and I ask, um, how are you feeling the Extra Glow project from Chief Keef? What are your favorite hip hop albums of 2020 so far? Uh, my favorite my fa now has got to be um, Clanway 2 by uh, Blue Buck Clan. It's, it's, it's some LA stuff. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. You've been in the gym so much, no time to listen to music. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you got to get on the ox and play some. Uh, I've been listening to Polo G. What I've really been listening to is Blue Bus Clan. That, that, that's who I want to get my co-sign to. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, they're coming out of L.A., you know what I mean? Uh, L.A. music, it, it's died down since, since Dr. Dre, you feel me? So, so just that SoCal sound uh, is not really too big right now, but uh, I think I think Blue Bucks, they got it right now. Blue Bucks, Blue Bucks Clan, yeah. That's what's up. I'm the least hip person on this podcast, so I'm I'm just gonna, I, I'm just gonna turn this. I'll, I'll look them up. I you, I'll look them up. I yeah. promise. But these these two guys will make fun of me after this is over. With. Alex, you go last. <laughs> I was gonna say, wow, no Uzi, no future going on here. But uh, no, what I really wanted future to ask was there we go. No, but uh, yep, what yep, I really yep. wanted to ask was uh, any shows that you've been watching over the past couple of months since the season shut down. I watched um, Ozark, Peaky Blinders. I finished that. What are you doing? Scrolling through your phone to see what you did? <laughs> <laughs> I'm scrolling through my my Netflix right now. That's what I'm doing. Oh, uh, I got you. I got you. Did, did you did peep you, Tiger King? Uh, KZ, did you watch? Did you watch Last Dance? Uh, Last Dance is what? The Jordan. Doc. Oh, the Last Dance. Yeah, the Michael Jordan. The Michael. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that, that's the one. I watched it on YouTube TV. Yeah. Was yeah. there one? Was there one thing about that that jumped out? I mean, you were. What year were you born? Ninety nine. Oh my God! So you you were born after uh, the whole thing was over. The whole so you, <laughs> I mean, no. Look, I, I, I growing up, all, all I would do was go go on YouTube. Kobe Kobe was my favorite player to uh, to watch. What's it called to this day? What's it called? But uh, I would always watch like like all YouTube videos twenty four seven. Right before I hoop, I was on YouTube and, and watch all that. But the specifics, you know what I mean? The dates and the timeline, I'm not too good at. That's all right. I mean, by the, couple, by, the, couple by the time you were born, he was a wizard. So that's uh, that, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that date you look. Well, KZ, we really appreciate you doing this. I know everybody wanted to hear from you. Uh, excited, yeah. Excited about the future for you and excited to, to what, if you guys get back in Orlando, we'll see what happens. But uh, excited to yep. just get you back with the program here. So uh, hopefully we can yeah. do this again. And, and best of luck to you, you know, okay. throughout the rest of the season yeah. and the off season. Yeah, I appreciate all y'all having me. I really appreciate that. Thanks, man. Thanks, KZ. Uh, Take care. Yeah, have a nice day. Yep. I want to thank KZ Akpala for joining us. Also, check out all of the other episodes with Heat players current and former. You can check out our Heat Stories series with people like Mario Chalmers, Udonis Haslam a couple of times, Chris Bosch, uh, and many, many more. And also, all of the current players. We spoke to Jay Crowder. Um, we've had Bam Adebayo on the podcast, Goran Dragic, and many others. So check out the library of Five on the Floor. Also check out one of our great sponsors, which is the Seltzer Mayberg Law Firm. You can find them at onecalllegal.com. That's O-N-E calllegal.com. There's someone there 24 hours a day, even during COVID, to answer your call and help you with your issue, whether it's traffic ticket, immigration, slip and fall, or just about anything else. Again, that's a Seltzer Mayberg law firm based right there in North Miami, but they handle cases from all over the state. OneCallLegal.com. Also, one other announcement, Floor is Yours will be going every Thursday night on our YouTube channel. Nikias Duncan is this week's special guest. Have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Five on the Floor on the Five Regional Sports.